Good morning, everybody. Welcome to morning prayer this morning. Welcome to St. Mag's Church. Um, you, the church, in your homes and in the community. So glad you guys could come along online this morning. Good morning, Simon. Good morning, Edwina. Simon, um, I've just asked Claire to message you. If you've lost a camera lens, I may well have it. Um, otherwise, it might be someone else's. Morning, Virginia and Elaine and Joe. Hey. Morning, Roz. We've been in here just uh, finalising preparations to uh, open the church for prayer this morning, which is really exciting. And it's looking fantastic. Morning, Julie. Morning, Pauline and John and Jackie. How are we all doing? How was the rest of your weekend? Actually, no, you've already had Monday. Monday is, is, my, is my Sabbath, is my, is my day off. So it feels like weekend to me. Morning, Stella and Wendy. Morning, Rachel and Anne. Do you know, Pauline Marr is watching and she's in the church. And, and there's one or two others who are team in the church just individually praying this morning. So um, Pauline's, Pauline's getting double doses this morning. Morning, Carrick. Oh, I've just lost my messages. There they are. It's set to be a beautiful, <clears throat> a beautiful day. And looking forward to the next few days. Yeah. Morning, Marie and Ed and Kirsty. Um, do let us know if there's things that we can be praying for over the course of the rest of the day. And um, we can report back this evening because I think I'm doing it this evening as well. Ed, it's good to see. Ed is, Ed is saying, Ed Williams is saying hello to Stella Williams. <clears throat> Have you not seen each other this morning? <laughs> well, you are really welcome to morning prayers. Uh, we're going to continue using the, the Lectio 365 app, which has been so, so good throughout this season. Excuse me a sec. <clears throat> Got a frog. Um, shall we pray? Holy Spirit, I thank you that you gather us together as your church, whether we are scattered into homes and into workplaces and on dog walks, or whether we find ourselves in the building, in the building that we're used to, to, to meeting in. Thank you for your presence. Will you settle our minds and our hearts from whirling around and all the things that are on our minds and help us to focus on you this morning? Today is Tuesday the 23rd of June and this week we're looking at the early church and how they express their love for each other through the practice of hospitality. I didn't know that was coming up this week. That's so cool. We were thinking about that on Sunday. Throughout this week we will be P-R-A-Y-ing. P, pausing, just to be still. R, rejoicing and um, reflecting. I couldn't remember what the other R was. A, asking, asking on behalf of ourselves and asking on behalf of the world. And Y, yielding, saying yes to God's will in our lives and in the world. It's a good thing to, to remember, P-R-A-Y. Pause, rejoice, ask, yield. If you want, if someone says, how do, how do I pray? Well, that's a, that's a useful little thing. And so as we enter prayer now, we pause to be still and to breathe slowly, to recenter our scattered senses on the presence of God.
God of welcome, you invite me into your family. I sit at your table and savour your word to me. Help me to receive all the nourishment that you have for me today. I choose to rejoice in God's guidance today, joining with the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 16. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always before me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. as I was reading that, I found that helpful to me to know that the Lord is always right beside me. The Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. And we need to know that in these days, in times that are uncertain and in things that are constantly flexing and changing, to know God's unfailing presence and the fact that he's with us is a wonderful thing. Mm. Thank you, Lord. This is our second day reflecting on Acts chapter 10. Yesterday I reflected on the Roman centurion receiving angelic instruction. Today we think about the Apostle Peter as God prepares him for a controversial invitation. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> about this is from Acts chapter 10. About noon the following day, as they, was, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened, and something like a large sheet being let down by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as birds and reptiles, then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Peter's vision isn't the product of a rumbling tummy or an overactive imagination. It's a picture from God. The sheet and its contents described here perfectly represent two traditional controversial things for a Jew. Food, Peter shouldn't eat, and as I'll see later in this chapter, people he shouldn't associate with, according to his tradition. The strict rules that Peter obeyed about food laws were given by God to set Israel apart from other nations. It was sometimes frowned upon in their culture for Jews to share a dinner with Gentiles. Jews were distinguished by what they ate, so their hospitality was often limited in this area. So it makes us think, and we'll continue the Acts, chapter, the Acts 10 passage tomorrow, I'm sure. But who, as we pray, who isn't welcome at the table of my life? Who do I separate myself from? Maybe someone who's hurt me or people with a different lifestyle or political perspective. I confess my prejudice and my hurt to God. Lord, show us if there's people who we have excluded from the table of our lives. widening the perspective a little bit. Is there a group in my community, my village, my town or city who aren't welcome? As I bring this group to you now, God, 
I pray for their inclusion and for your loving protection and action in their lives. As we think about Torbay or your community, if you're watching from elsewhere, who are vilified? Who are looked down upon? Who are spoken about negatively? How can we extend God's love to them? As I return to the passage, I open my ears to hear your word and my heart to yield to your will once again. We get to hear it a second time. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up onto the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Peter replied, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Just think how different the book of Acts would have been if God had not prepared Peter with this vision. Peter, a good Jewish man, would probably have turned down the invitation that he would soon receive from a Roman centurion. He would have never realised that God's agenda was moving beyond Israel to encompass every nation. Who could God be preparing me to welcome today? Where is God at work in unexpected ways? Father, there is so often a reason as to why, for example, this reading is happening today, both in the life of the church as we open up our doors once again to public for people to come in and pray, a symbol of hospitality, but also I'm sure individually in our own lives, maybe not for everybody, but for some of us listening, you will probably bring people along today who we wouldn't have given a, a moment to, that we wouldn't have paid attention to, but because of what you have said to us this morning, we will pay attention and we will give the time of day and we will welcome and we will think differently because of what we've heard from your word. Give us eyes to see people as you see them today, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you loved the whole world so much that you gave your son, Jesus. You promised to exclude no one from the invitation of Jesus. Mm. Well, we're gonna bring our prayers into close in just a second. Um, I'm just going to flick through the messages and see if there's any prayer requests, anything like that. Uh, so I just realised something. Um, uh, Paula, thank you for your explanation about the laughing face. It's no problem. Um, and for your comments. Thanks, Snork Maiden. Uh, da -da -da. Okay. So known as having an operation, we're going to pray for her. Sorry about the signal. Um, let me know if the signal's been okay. We are going to boost, um, we're going to boost the signal over the coming few days, we hope. 
Ed, you did leave a camera lens here. I have it in my pro my possession. Now I think I think that is everything. Yeah. Father, we lift to you all our own individual needs and the people and places that are on our hearts today. Lord, we ask you come alongside people and that they will reach out to you. We ask that you give us, as we've been thinking about, uh, wisdom to see opportunities to bless and to love in your name and to speak about the hope that we have because of you. Thank you that Nona has such a hope in you for the way that she radiates your presence. And Lord, we ask for, for real blessing upon the surgery that she has today. Lord, we're sorry that she has to have it. We thank you for the example of faith that she has been over these last weeks. We ask for your protection over her and your blessing upon her and John and all the family today. And we ask for speedy recovery for her. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, folks, I'm going to finish up and uh, we've got a little team gathered here uh, or gathering here ready to, uh, to open up the doors to, for prayer. So if you're around and you'd like to pop down, uh, it's just open doors. You can come and you can pray and there's all you know, hand sanitization and uh, social distancing and all of that stuff. And then, um, I don't know if I should say this, but you know, with the announcement this morning that it looks like cinemas are going to open and so much is opening up, I would be, uh, I don't know, I don't know any more than you. I probably don't know any more than the bishops right now because um, they sometimes uh, receive information as the, uh, as the, as the newsreaders present it and as the, um, uh, the daily briefings happen. So, you know, we're not kept uh, well informed. I don't think anyone is in advance. Uh, that's not a blame thing, it's just stating the facts. Um, but you know, I, I would hope that over the coming weeks we'll be able to begin to, uh, to open the doors more fully and um, have, have services, albeit slightly different. But who knows? I might be wrong, but that's what I'll be requesting. And um, uh, yeah, because things are, things are moving apace now, I hope. Um, so we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Enjoy it. And uh, God bless. I'm just going to quickly flick through to the last messages in case I missed anything. No, just amens and thank yous. Brill. I'll see you soon. Bye.